I love honey in general, everything, but mule deer hunting, they are so beautiful. I just feel like where they live is an awesome area, whether I've hunted mule deer in Wyoming, or I've hunted now obviously in Utah, and I've hunted in Sonora, Mexico. They absolutely are very majestic people that love to hunt mule deer um, probably understand that. It's just to see a big, beautiful, mature, older mule deer, it just sometimes doesn't get better than that. The mule deer is by far my biggest passion and it's just, I feel like it's a very tough animal to hunt, very educated animal, especially a mature, older animal, you know, like we really strive to harvest is that five, six or plus year old deer that is educated in a lot of ways that most deer aren't. It takes a, an older deer to get to that quality of animal we really like to hunt. Getting the Ponsagant tag this year, I was really, really excited for a couple of reasons. I know how hard it is to get a tag in this area. The other thing that was really, really exciting is that I brought my friend Coop, which she's one of my best friends and a mother of four that I absolutely love just being around. And she approached me and wanted to learn how to hunt. And I said, well, if I get a tag and the opportunity comes up and presents itself, I'd love to um, invite you. I am very familiar with shooting a camera, but not very familiar with shooting a gun. I've always been interested in hunting, but I've never had the opportunity. I didn't grow up in a hunting family. My husband doesn't hunt. It just never seemed to present itself, and it seemed like a, an opportunity that I wasn't going to have. It also was a little bit intimidating. I feel like the world of hunting is, was just a different world from mine. When we met up with Brady, it was really fun to be around and I knew right away that we were gonna have a great time together and have a great hunt. Very knowledgeable, uh, had great intuition. I knew that he was gonna do a good job by Carrie on this hunt. So I met Brady from Wade Lemon. He'd been scouting and had seen a big one and they just had an archery hunt prior because this is a muzzleloader hunt. A hunter was, uh, had a tag for archery and he ended up seeing that big deer and he shot too high and wounded it and Brady told me that he watched it and they tried to find it a few days later and they did end up seeing it, never could get close enough to it and he said he watched it enough, he felt like it was um, alive and doing good and eating and healthy and he said if Carrie when you come down, if that happens we're going to go after this deer. The next morning we got up early and got up there before our light and just kind of waited till the light showed up and then we saw some deer. We saw a lot of does and some small bucks and um, there was probably, I don't really can't quite remember, but at least around 30 throughout that whole mid-morning and just not him. And so we decided we were going to walk up around in hopes that maybe if he is in the area, he's just hunkered down and maybe, maybe we can walk and find him and he'll, we'll get the opportunity. So as we were walking, we smelt something and um, got closer to it and there was a lot of trees and it was thick but ended up down in a little type of a draw. Mm -hmm. He was a three by four last year on this side and just had a little kicker. He blew up this year. Yeah. This is a part that sucks when you see something like this, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. With that little hook on the beam, it's bigger than we thought. Mm-hmm. It's a big deer. It's a big deer. Hunted real hard, scouting for him prior to the hunt. 
and then was able to obviously find him dead opening day of the hunt, which is a very unfortunate deal. But the, the nice thing is, is that hunter will receive them horns and that deer will be, you know, on his wall and it'll be an amazing deal for him. And it was great for us to be able to bring that closure to that deer. After that, we gathered our stuff, went to the total opposite end of the unit after another target deer that we'd seen that's typical and one that we'd pre-scouted and found earlier in the velvet. And we was able to get in there the very first night after moving from the other end of the unit and right where he was supposed to be, right where we'd seen him earlier in the season. We got a glimpse of him right before dark. I had seen pictures of the, the buck that we were uh, looking for, and I was pretty excited, because uh, I don't know a lot about bucks, but the one I saw was like, whoa, that's a big guy, right? Like anything with horns is a big guy to me, but this guy was substantial. It was just really fun to go out and, and glass. I've been learning so many different terminologies with hunting, and that's been kind of a cool thing, but it was, it was really fun to go out and glass and scout. It was kind of like, where's Waldo? I love finding the shot, like, in photography, finding that perfect, that sweet spot, that shot, that interesting moment, that thing. And so glassing was actually a lot of fun for me. So the Ponsagant deer herd is a migrating deer herd. They migrate miles and miles south every winter. Being extremely hot in the 80 degrees with a full moon, there was very little migration and that's where that pre-scouting paid off for us. We wasn't looking for a deer that we hadn't seen. We was looking for a deer we'd actually had seen. You know, we rely on our glass a lot. We rely on good optics, a good tripod, really take your time glassing instead of just driving the roads and trying to find them from the road. They're just, they're hard to find. They're hard to, to see even when they're by the roads. You've got to spend your time behind the glass and just spend time in the hills learning how to identify a good mule deer and what a mature buck looks like and identify the right areas that should hold deer, you know, good feed, good quality feed. Went to a little spot where we could get a little bit of advantage and um, we just looked. Nothing came out, we didn't see anything, but it was a beautiful morning and so we decided, well, let's just kind of go up a little ways and move to a different area in case for whatever reason he moved. Within probably 10 minutes, he says, there's the buck. And I immediately put up my binoculars and I said, I see him. With the tall grass and the tall brushes, it just wasn't good. I just didn't feel comfortable about it. So I just kept waiting and watching, and then they kept moving. So then we would then sneak up and go a little further, and we'd set up again, and they'd regroup, and they were just kind of like messing with each other. And so I didn't have a shot, so I just kept patiently waiting. This happened for like almost a half an hour. When we were stalking the deer, it was just so exciting. Like I couldn't, I was like shaking. I couldn't even hold my camera still because I was so excited. And then, and then I was really worried. Like, what if I mess up and I make too much noise or I blow it? <laughs> you know. So I was trying to be really aware of myself. Watching Carrie set up that shot and just like experiencing her her patience and her persistence. She is somebody who lives out her faith and she knows that God is on her side and that was just so powerful. And to know that like in the end all the glory is to God and she knows it and she gives it and she's just a vector and, and really everything that she does is for Christ and, and you can just feel it, it just exudes from her. So when she set up and 
took that last breath and took that shot. It was just perfect. Nice shot. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. Coop? Coop? Come and give me a hug. Put your camera down. Hey. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Also, I about peed my pants when you shot. <laughs> you did? <laughs> Why? Because I was loud and scared yes. you? I told you it was loud. Plug your ears. I said, oh my lord. Plug your ears. So did you see how hard that was? Oh. Like to literally like always keep calm yeah. and follow the deer and make sure you have that clear body shot, right? That perfect one shot, which is right behind the shoulder. Yeah. And then with all the other deer, you never want to take a shot until you know for sure you're good to go. Four by four, tall in the back. These G2s are beautiful. Oh my gosh. Wow. Old, mature. Wow. When I walked up to my deer, I was like, wow, he's wide. He looked wide, but he was wider than I thought. It's hard to find a symmetrical mule deer, let alone a wide symmetrical mule deer. That really makes me just appreciate, you know, this whole hunt. You know, my friend Coop that was here and Brady that was that my guide. It just makes it makes it even better. So the icing on the cake too was as we approached this deer, the sweet family pulled up and they were so excited for us and the, the dad asked if his little girls could come in and see and these two little toeheads come trotting out there with their dad and just filled me with joy because I have four kids of my own and and they're all a bunch of blondies and um, made me miss home a little bit but also made me really excited that this dad got to share something like this with his daughters and then his, his wife and their baby boy were in the car too and they came out and it was just such a what a cool moment in that I was here to learn and experience something um, that I never had the opportunity to do growing up and that this dad was creating this opportunity for his family. We couldn't have orchestrated that any better and that's just another reminder like how intentional God is and how he puts you in the situations that you're in for a reason. See if you can find what I Okay, up here. Yep. Another cool thing about this hunt was I got to see the whole gutting process, which maybe some people are like, oh, that's who wants to see that? But I'm just fascinated by the body and bodies, and I loved my anatomy classes. It was really cool to see the whole process, and um, I got to, you know, get my hands dirty a little bit. I guess it could have gone south real fast if I would have just nicked the wrong thing, but I thankfully didn't. Anything that I could get in a uh, spot in my binoculars was lovely, but uh, it was a real treat to be able to ha actually have my camera with me and um, be able to capture the beauty that I was seeing all around me. Being a professional photographer is absolutely amazing and you get to see so many amazing things, but to come into a new um, landscape and get to really get curious again and explore and find out what else I can see through my lens. <laughs> I would love to encourage people who are even remotely the slightest bit interested in, in hunting, but have a little bit of reservation because it's not something that's familiar to them or anything really, to just dive in and just do it. Because the only way that you're going to learn is to do it. You only grow in the uncomfortable. So put yourself in situations that create growth in your life. I'm tickled pink. I had the best experience. I cannot wait for the next 
hunt. I can't wait to learn more. I can't wait to teach my family. I'm just on cloud nine. This was such a great experience.